Hi everybody, it is June 4, 2019. Here is the information that I have collected. Information on new communities that are now flooded out. What is to come in some communities. Um, it is really... Well, I want to say unimaginable. What we are now witnessing is the unimaginable. Uh, realized. <laughs> Problems for businesses along the Milwaukee River downtown. Many of the buildings have been flooded since last month. Madeline Anderson joining us live downtown with more on this growing concern. Yeah, Ben, it's from all of the rain that we've had this spring. It's caused the river levels to rise considerably, overflowing into many of these businesses' basements and even forcing some to shut down temporarily until they dry out. During the typically busy noon hour, tables at restaurant brunch are instead empty, doors are locked, and a sign on the window reads closed. It's extremely frustrating. For me, my biggest concern are my staff right now, making sure that they are continuing to get hours and working. Morgan Sampson's popular dining spot has been shut down since last Tuesday when rising river levels left two feet of standing water in the basement. We do use our basement for functional space with our food and dry storage and because of that we really find it unsafe to operate for our own staff and our customers. Customers like this husband and wife. I didn't think it would come up this high to affect it honestly. Who showed up Tuesday unaware they wouldn't be able to eat and especially so it's not just farmers, it's businesses, um, so many different types of businesses that are getting flooded out. To tell you what's happening with the storm system coming in tomorrow, we are somewhat concerned about flash flooding with this particular system because rainfall rates will be so high and we could see some training of thunderstorms, which could cause some major problems. The training of thunderstorms, yes. The latest and the greatest term. Never heard the training of thunderstorms. So much is new today. Like, well, it's kind of feeling like uh, we've never lived here before and we're learning new lingo problems, especially for the morning rush hour. So with that in mind, the flash flood watch has been issued for all of Southeast Texas. Uh, it, it goes into effect at 1 a.m. tonight. It lasts all the way until 7 a.m. on Thursday. I will go ahead and tell you we're most concerned about areas from Houston to the east and south, south of Interstate 10, but just about anybody in Southeast Texas could experience a street flooding with the heavy thunderstorms coming in. To manufactured, manufactured in the Gulf. Vice President Mike Pence is touring flooded towns in Oklahoma today. The Vice President and the Second Lady arrived just before noon and while they were there they first stopped at a community food bank and that's where they met with volunteers who are feeding families that are in need right now. They also then went on to tour a neighborhood that was hit hard by the flooding. The water is expected to go down but it could take a few Oh, Mike Pence. He's putting some cans in a box. Don't you love these stage productions when you get these politicians coming into flooded areas? You know, and I can't stand watching the ordinary American smiling and praising and giving accolades to these people who don't give a shit about them. I'm sorry. Uh, where was Mike Pence? Uh, well, throughout all of this flooding. Now he shows up, he does a little bit of, oh, I'll put these cans in a box, you'll put it on TV, everybody will love me. Have we heard from Trump? And, you know, I'll, I've said that before. What, what have we heard from Trump? Tens of thousands of Americans are no longer in their homes. Farmers, Trump loved the farmers, right? Loved them so much that he devastated and devastated the farmers with his trade war. And now they're devastated with this flooding. Where's Trump? Well, I'll show you where Trump is. But, you know, you think Mike Pence doesn't know that these storms are being manufactured? Of course he does. 
Of course he knows about weather modification. Of course he knows about geoengineering. And of course he knows about Agenda 2030 and how our federal agencies, virtually everyone, is implementing Agenda 2030. If you don't know what that is, please do some research. Um, and, and don't you love watching the acting of these people? These are not politicians. They're actors and actresses putting on a show for the American people. A few weeks. Oh, 23 seconds. That's it? Well, that's about as much of a and an attention span that most Americans have, right? I'm calling my neighbors like this. Uh, somebody call 911, you know, because I'm over here thinking it's going to come over the car and we're going to get, I'm going to get drowned it because I don't know how to swim. I'm going to die here, you know. And it was very thing because tomorrow is my daughter's graduation. I can't miss that. We waited all this time for that. You know, this is my last words. I figured, you know, victory, but then, you know, but we still made it to the graduation, but I just didn't want to die yet. I could die tomorrow, but not today, right? It was so scary because I said, oh my God, we're going to get drowned because I don't know how to swim. I don't know how to swim. The current was so hard because I could fit it on my legs, you know. And then I told my daughter, no, we can't make it because it's too hard. It's too hard. No, we're not going to make it. I said, the, the only thing I can think of is jump on top of the car. I'm hoping that the city of Fort, Fort Worth, Dallas. You know, we're hearing about the major flooding, but we don't hear about the flash flooding. That is just, you know, local news segments. This just happened a couple of days ago. And I hear that graduation and how that mother just wanted to make it to the graduation. I can die after that. I have a graduation story to tell you. I'm going to leave it for another video. about a mother and daughter who didn't make it to their graduation. Lakeland Electric Short on power this June. Ah, Lakeland, Florida. Utility company will not be capable of producing enough energy to meet anticipated cu customer demand for most of June. Yeah, right now we are experiencing extreme heat in the state of Florida. Power outages, get ready for them, uh, all over the country, but certainly the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, get ready for them. Sorry, we just don't have enough energy to meet your needs. You're going to have to ration your air conditioner, your air conditioning use. And I've posted videos showing you the white papers on how rationing of air conditioning was coming. Um, okay, here we go. Um, hang on. I have cat craziness. So, Impacts of river flooding felt far beyond Louisiana. Dolphins, turtles, dying. They're dying. The dolphins being on top of the food chain are a very good biological indicator for the environment they serve as a canary in the mine. So by watching them, we can predict where the environment will go. This is a quote from a scientist. It's telling me there's a huge amount of stress right now. Very good scientist. More than 120 wild dolphins and more than 140 sea turtles have washed up dead in the Mississippi Sound, the body of water that extends from the Mississippi coastline to the barrier islands in the last six months. 
freshwater lesions, which allow bacteria and fungus to grow, killing the animal. Scientists in Mississippi believe fresh water pouring in from the Bonnie Carey spillway in Louisiana may be to blame. Ah, they don't know. They're guessing. They're guessing. So they've been washing up dead for six months. And yeah, here we go. We've never seen anything like this happen in the past. So they claim that it is the flooding that is taking place that's killing the dolphins. So, so many unprecedented, never before seen experiences that we are having. Might something else be going on that is causing what look like perfect circles? on this dolphin because we do have an awful lot going on an awful lot of toxins in that gulf think about the BP uh, oil spill and all of the toxins that were used oh we think that this will uh, clean up the oil so what was that um, God, I can't remember. Something exit, or I can't remember, but yeah, we're just going to pour this in, which was incredibly toxic, which killed an awful lot of animals. And what did it do? Didn't it just push the oil down? It didn't clean up anything? And then we have all of the frequencies blasting away. Yeah, we are killing all life. Another breach. We've seen so much water here continues to rise and some areas are still days away from the crest. The river is overtopping and breaking levees as floodwaters make their way downstream. Today, Governor Mike Parson toured flooded areas in the northeast part of the state where there have been around a dozen water rescues. Last night, the river breached the Pin Oak levee that protects Winfield. Today, the entire town is flooded. Our Abby Larico starts our coverage from Lincoln County. The entire town. is flooded. More people out of their homes. Well, and you know what? In articles that I've read, well, what are they claiming? Much of this flooding is going to go on throughout June. Look at this. Two minutes ago. Here it goes. Look at it. Look at it. Some tech. Oh shit. There it goes. There goes the culvert. That's the culvert. That's the culvert. It's gone. God damn. Both culverts. Damn. Do you think they're loosening up the soil? This was in Oklahoma. With those, you know, extremely low frequencies. With all of the frequencies. Town facing big problems because of flooding. People living in the town of Levesey have been forced out. Leaving their homes and everything else they own behind, waiting for the water to finally recede. KCTV 5's Amy Anderson is there live with more on this dire situation, Amy. Well, Brad, we have seen quite a few people getting back into their homes today by way of boat. It is the only way to get in and out of Levesey, and one family will sleep better tonight, knowing the damage wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been. Thank 
it's just a sad thing because uh, you don't want nobody to ever go through that, yeah. ever. And that's why Kimberly Wolf and her husband showed up with their canoe today so they could give their dear friends a ride out to their house to see what's left. <laughs> About 90 minutes later, they were back and the news was good. We made it. Mike Schmittler will only need to replace his carpet. His is one of only a handful of homes in the town of 84 built on a berm, and it made all the difference. I mean, it could have been, well, some of them are goners for sure. I mean, a lot of them, because we paddled in that way down the street. He's right. Not everyone will be as lucky as he was. There are several houses here with at least a foot of water inside, enough to do a lot of damage. The Buckner United Methodist Church opened its doors over the weekend, hosting the Red Cross around the clock. Wow. Missouri. Going weeks without water. That's the reality for one local community. KSNT News reporter Willis Scott is live near Lake Perry to explain the problem. Willis? And where is this? Lake Perry. Well, hang on. Kansas. Brooke, this is where most people in Lakeside Village are getting their water after their wells flooded. The water has to be trucked in from Perry. Now, for a little while, a local fire department was moving this tanker back to and from Perry, but they had to quit after it became too expensive to keep doing for free. So now this is all the water the community has left until they can find someone else to bring in more. Matt Salter has something most of his neighbors don't running water. I have water now, but I was out for two and a half weeks and I finally got frustrated and said, well, I'm going to figure something out. He used his expertise as a plumber to pump water into his house. I reverse feed it into my house so it does all my fixtures, kitchen fixtures. Others have to fill up with water trucked into the community. Dick Robertson's grateful for that. It, they've done just about everything they can to take care of it, you know. Uh, it's a little inconvenient, so a lot. This is where the town's well is, underwater. We have a backup well, but they're both down. And Lakeside Village Board President Jerry White says they can't fix the well pumps until the lake goes down again. We need... Now, if people realize that this flooding was actually manufactured by man, having nothing to do with Mother Nature, uh, not an act of God, do you think that they might have different feelings than what we are hearing. You know, we hear an awful lot saying never seen anything like it, but what we also hear is gratitude for the National Guard, uh, gratitude for the Army Corps of Engineers for the fabulous work that they're doing, um, gratitude you know, for um, being alive, having lost everything, if they realized that they were victims of a war, if they were, if they realized that this was and is a deliberate flooding, do you think that they might be feeling something differently? I think so. I think so. Interstate 620 was uh, southwestern Iowa. <laughs> so many interstates, so many roads, so many highways closed. Closed. So can you imagine what is happening in these areas where uh, they can't get to work, they can't get to um, places uh, that they need to go and the crumbling infrastructure. What about the people who have found back roads and it takes them an hour and a half, what used to take them 10 minutes? So the people who have, they still have their home, but they are experiencing the ripple effects 
of man using weather as a weapon. And yes, I have playlists with all the evidence. Playlists called weather modification, another playlist called geoengineering. So, what is that? That's a rooftop. That's a rooftop. Conway, Arkansas. The flooding continues. The flooding continues. That's a lot of flood and mud and destruction. Yeah. And Trump isn't saying anything about this. We have never seen flooding like we are seeing in 2019. Sorry. Uh, the scale of flooding is unprecedented. And we haven't heard anything. The Trump supporters will leave me comments. He did sign a uh, declaration of disaster or an emergency declaration for Oklahoma and I believe Arkansas. Oh, but he cares so much about his fellow Americans. So you would think that he would be devastated and you would think that you would hear something when tens of thousands of Americans are experiencing disaster, losing their homes, losing their businesses, losing their farms, losing their ranches, all the animals dying, all the people suffering, stuck in shelters, uh, whole towns engulfed in water. You would think that you would hear something from that guy. Well, I haven't heard anything. And if you have, post the link below. St. Charles, Missouri. The county is in a state of emergency due to uh, flooding. Some folks have evacuated. Ryan Henson is out there in Deerfield Village where water is creeping closer and closer to homes. What's up, Ryan? Yeah, hey, Chester. Now, people, as the sun comes up, people are kind of getting out of their homes a little bit more. Some people coming back from, I guess, wherever they're staying, they're keeping them dry. Some people coming from down the street because they're trying to rough it out at home. Look how deep some of the water is just down the street. You see that line of mailboxes. Obviously, we don't know how tall a mailbox is, and that water level's creeping higher and higher. Now, in some cases, water is in homes. In this home in particular right here, you can see that they put sandbags up, trying to create a little bit of barrier, an extra layer of protection the water has breached that, but it doesn't look like it's in this home. But uh, some folks here in the area are frustrated by the city's efforts to keep their homes safe and dry. But here's a fire department talking about their efforts and their changes to sandbagging. Flooding forces residents in South County apartment complex to evacuate. Missouri. St. Louis. I'm knocking on door to door, telling them. We need to evacuate. All this would be flooded by dark. Some residents who live in the Cedar Creek Lodge apartments in South St. Louis County were being evacuated on Tuesday as authorities prepare for a near historic crest. The main entrance of the apartment complex is flooded and the road has been shut down. St. Louis County police and firefighters are knocking on doors, encouraging residents to leave their homes. The water is continuing to rise down here, and there is a, a risk of it getting into the buildings. The water is not going to start going down yet today. It doesn't crest until Thursday, so we want to make sure that everyone in this area is, is safe. And throughout the day, residents have been packing up, carrying their personal items to leave the complex, hoping they will be able to return when the water recedes. It's kind of scary, but, you know, I'm just trying to stay calm and... I have a plan and stuff, so how to like get to work. Get here right away, but I didn't think it was this bad. Uh, he told me the road was flooded. I didn't think it was really this flooded. Authorities say a nearby creek that runs into the River De Pere is backing up with no place to go. Residents say they will continue to monitor the river levels and forecast. It's been monitor the river, the river levels. Here's what flooding looks like on the St. Lawrence River for people with shorefront property on Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River. This spring has brought a lot of stress. A recent forecast predicts Lake Ontario flood levels could keep rising for another three weeks. Another three weeks. And 
what are people saying uh, along uh, Lake Ontario, upstate New York? It's worse than the 2017 flood. It's worse. Nothing like a little, nothing like a little destruction. Okay, so tens of thousands of Americans just within the last couple of months have met that uh, circumstance that have destroyed their business, destroyed their farms, destroyed their cattle, destroyed their homes, just like we've been watching a whole lot of Americans made homeless paradise fire wow 24 hours in just 24 hours it leveled thousands and thousands of homes a whole town leveled oh there were a few homes that survived it wow well we know that directed energy weapons were used but the, then think about all of the other fires that have leveled whole areas of California. And then think about all of the destruction due to recent hurricanes. Uh, and, oh, right, all right, I have a playlist. U.S. floods beginning in January 2017. No, 2018. 2018. Full year of flash floods that destroyed so many homes and businesses. Oh, and infrastructure and roads taken out and sinkholes left and bridges um, flooded out and uh, so this is this year and well what's Trump doing? He's hanging out with his friends He's hanging out with his friends. Yes. And you know what? He and his friends, they are celebrating shared values of freedom and sovereignty. How sickening this is. How disgusting this is. These psychopathic, twisted, sick people who the queen herself could alleviate poverty in the world. Ah, but she's not going to do that. Uh-uh. Trump, this is what he's doing. Pomp and circumstance, getting together with that elite club, eating really good food. Oh, and they're dry, and they're just having a ball. I love... America. I love Americans. I love the farmer. What does he say? Please. Please. You think these people care at all about ordinary people? Are you crazy? He's having a good time. If you have heard him speak about this flood and all of the Americans the scale of flooding, the tens of thousands who have been destroyed, please do leave that link below because I haven't. This is disgusting. This display of just opulence, the display of, hey, we have it all. We eat the good food. We don't have to be evacuated. We don't have to deal with flooding. Oh, and if we do, we've got so many homes to choose from. You know, this has always bothered me. Always. 
and we see so many people suffering and these people don't give a flying shit about any of them. Oh, but they talk a good game, don't they? They talk a good game. You know, I've often wondered how it is that people can see these people as good. Because good people would never, never just fly off and enjoy themselves while so many people are suffering. You know, this is a time when Trump should have been staying in this country speaking out about this flooding and talking about all of those Americans who are suffering and trying to encourage other Americans to help them in their in their time of great need but you hear nothing you hear nothing so don't tell me that this guy is real don't tell me that this guy cares please you know I remember Obama being asked about the bombing campaign when he was president-elect after the election Israel begins a bombing campaign that killed uh, I, what 1300 Palestinians killed children and Obama was asked about Israel's bombing campaign of the Gaza Strip as Israel is known to do what did Obama say he's he, I, I'm not the president yet and we have a president in office and you know something about not wanting to speak on the matter because he's only president-elect but I am going to Hawaii for vacation oh I care so much I care so much and people were looking at this guy like he walks on water doesn't take much to fool a fool and yeah we've got a lot of Americans who I, I do believe that they're just little children looking at daddy and daddy can do no wrong God. Well, <laughs> yeah, they're celebrating freedom and sovereignty. As our sovereignty is gone, and so is our freedom. Oh, you can live that delusion like you have it. Go ahead. But this is the display. This is the despicable display of opulence, living the good life while ordinary. Uh, citizens in their own country suffer more and more suffer every single day they don't give a shit they never even speak to the suffering and they're celebrating something that we're losing it is right in our face it has been in our face for a really long time and I'm afraid that Americans will never really see because they are lost they are lost it is it is utterly reprehensible that this guy is yakking it up having a good laugh with the queen while we see this kind of flooding Towns across part of Louisiana's Cajun country lay all but abandoned today, awaiting a deluge from the Mississippi River. Water began pouring across the countryside after engineers opened a major spillway on Saturday. The plan was to ease pressure on Baton Rouge and New Orleans downriver. And today, Governor Bobby Jindal said it's working. Bottom line, some... Morganza spillway. Now, those of you who know that she died you will get this is not a current video Morganza spillway flooding out 
a whole lot of Louisiana, 2011, and it's going on again. So, Morganza Spillway opening delayed, but tropical system may also threaten New Orleans. Ah, New Orleans, sorry. Uh, New Orleans, the tropical system that they're bringing into the Gulf, uh, or into the um, states of Texas and Louisiana, manufactured by man, and more thunderstorms and more flooding for Arkansas and Missouri and possibly Illinois, but possibly, possibly um, Oklahoma as well. You are noticing that these clouds are moving north and these are moving south. Interesting. Well, they delayed it again. June 9, Sunday, June 9, is when the Corps will open the structure, the Morganza Spillway, to flood out a lot of Louisiana. And if this, this uh, manufactured storm that they're bringing in if it goes as they're reporting, look out. Look out. Holy, we are living something that uh, we haven't seen before. And that's why it is nothing short of despicable. this guy to say nothing? Well, a lot of Americans, based on the comments that I'm reading from you guys, you're having conversations with others in your community and apparently not a whole lot of people know what really is occurring here. They want to keep it on the down low. Oh, mainstream media, you got to report. You got to report on some of it but you're not going to really dig in and show the full scale of what is happening. And I'm not going to bring it up because that puts attention on it, you know? So I'm just going to yuck it up with the queen. Two evil people who could help so many people around the world. Ah, uh, but why do that? Why do that? Because evil likes to destroy good Good likes to foster life, lift up life. Evil likes to destroy. And they can laugh and yuck it up while so many of their own lose everything. Sorry, that is not what we call a good person.